Welcome. And just a reminder that we are recording this session. Um, you've got the chat function down the bottom and the reactions as per normal. Um, we'd love to hear where it is you're joining us from. Um, and I'm going to pass over to Naomi, our host for this morning. Yeah, hello. Hello. Well, um, welcome to Watch Moths. And I know we've got some exciting moths to see this morning, as well as some lovely bits of information about the um, the project and where Moth to a Flame is going and how it's going to be installed in uh, Glasgow. So we also have, I think I will introduce the two new people who've joined us this morning um, from the Plymouth Energy Community, who are our partners in this project and without whom we wouldn't be delivering it at all. So um, we are going to introduce Gemma, who works for Plymouth Energy Community and has been making things with us. Gemma, hi. Good morning, everybody. Um, yeah, this is my first Watch Moths and very excited to be here. Thank you. And, and also Claire Mains, uh, who has been the Good story. morning. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's lovely. Thank you very yeah. much. Thank you for having me. I always uh, worry that I either... I'm talking about things that are so far apart from moss, but as we've gone on, I think I, I've learned that everything's very well connected. So yeah, thanks for having me again. Good morning. Thank you. Um, so let's let's go st straight over to Simon and see in Mike and Biddy Walton's garden and see what they have found. They had two traps out last night and it's in Exeter. Morning, everybody. Morning. Hello. <laughs> we're, uh, we're going to do a little tour around the garden first, very quickly, because I know there's some brilliant moths to uh, uh, for the reveal. Come on, Mike, show us around the garden. Um, garden. Yes. <laughs> so we're in Exeter, and yeah, Mike had his um, homemade trap out down here. Yeah, in this area, we've got some nice shrubs here, and they've got a lovely. Um, uh, Hazel tree, um, which I think you said that that's that's come with you from that's your very moved, moved house twice. Actually, that, that hazel tree because we're so fond of it. Moved house twice, yes. Or and uh, what have we got? A oh, lovely pond, lovely pond here. Mm. Isn't that superb? Quite yeah. a lot pond. Um, a, a elder at the back there. Some big elder elder flowers. Lots of shrubs. I think that's a flax. Is it? Um, yeah. New Zealand yeah. flax, I think. So that's, uh, I've had my trap down there. We're only halfway through that one. So, um, of course, we've got the Clifton non is lurking in there somewhere. Um, there's, maybe you can just about see a cypress tree there. Um, we've had cypress pugs at the time we were here. Um, oh, apple tree. Um, apple tree there oh and it's not looking really at its best yet but although there is this nice corn flower so this is your um your meadow your meadow yes, wildflower meadow brilliant brilliant and i've just given uh, mike and biddy some seeds from the night flowering catch fly oh well done simon so you want to know what we've got yes uh, right what have we got here mike yeah Okay. Oh yeah, there we go. Lovely. And we've got a light emerald. They're beautiful, aren't they? Isn't that a lovely colour? I can't even describe that green. But somebody might uh, want to have a go on Mint. chat. Mint green. Minty green, yes. It's um, mint. A very common. That, that's common at the moment. This is common at the moment, but nevertheless, still absolutely stunning. The angle. Mm. Where, where do the um, larvae of angle shades live, Simon? Well, they eat uh, quite a, a range of um, shrubs. Um, yeah. Common moths that, you know, are, are quite Catholic in their taste. Yeah. This, uh, we've got a lot of these in the trap. The uh. why, hopefully you can just see... This camera's not focusing brilliantly. Yeah, it's because it's focusing on the glass. So it's better over the trap. Ah, there we go. How's that? That's better. 
Mm. So we've got the, the silver, silver Y. Can you see the sort of Y shape, white Y shape on it? Mm. Okay. Um, those are migra migratory, and so many, perhaps many that we've got in the trap have flown in from abroad. And then we've got the common marble show, common marble carpet. And the thing is that we've got, they're all the same species, but totally different. So we've got this amazing dark one in the center. And then we've got this one. Yeah. Um, with the creamy markings on it. And then we've got this one. Yeah, that's going to be better to take it out. Isn't it? This one has got orange, a, a big orange panel. Mm. And they are they, did you say they're all the same species? Yeah, yeah. So mm. why that this this particular moth has got so many different colour forms? Um, like many of the moths in the trap, they, they will eat a wide range of, of herbs and shrubs so it's not about food sometimes it can be about what, what particular food the, the larvae caterpillars are eating but i don't think that's the case here and you know people on the line might have uh, might be able to explain why they're so different john might um might be able to do that later because he's a better ecologist than i am <laughs> uh we've got uh, willow beauty there um, Almost done on a snout. And a snout. Oh, my. oh yeah, we've got flying common marble carpet. Um, and, the snout. and the snout, yeah. It has got, what's, what's the snout doing, Simon? What's it there for? Is, is it a <laughs> nose or is it just a, just a sort of remnant of something evolved? It's, it's, it's the mouth, the mouth parts. Oh, right, okay. Yeah. Oh, and there's a brimstone. Oh, you, you got some beautiful moths last night then. Oh, this is, this is nice. We're really pleased with this one. Mm. Which, um, go on, Biddy, tell us, tell us what this one looks like. 1970s carpet, I thought. Yeah. Did you get that? <laughs> Not quite, didn't quite hear. 1970s. It's got a fancier name than that. Ranunculus large. large or something. Oh, right. <laughs> it's, it's a large ranunculus, but I think Bid is absolutely right. It looks like a 1970s carpet. Oh yes. I'm I'm sure this camera isn't doing a brilliant job of focusing for some reason. We will do, I think. Um, I think we, we we'll have a pause and, and can we come back um, and show you the rest of the trap? Because yes, we can. Yeah, we can. We can go on to Jackie Brown in, in, um, or Jackie Stubbins in Cheltenham, and then come back to you. That's afterwards. great. So, let's have a see what Jackie's got in her traps. Because you got those amazing. You had those amazing. Um, the sugar syrup from uh, your did. boy was painting, and you had two other sorts of traps, didn't you? We did, yeah. So on the sugar syrup, um, I I tried a recipe last week and had um, uh, square spot rustics on it. But last night we just my kids just made all sorts of mixtures from things out of the back of the cupboard. <laughs> and um, the one they apparently put marmite in um, that attracted loads of daddy long legs. So that's all that we had. So I stayed up for about an hour after last night's broadcast, and that's all that we found on those. But you know, I'm still pleased we've got daddy long legs. I know they're not moths, but you know they're insects, and insect numbers are plummeting. So it's always lovely to be to see anything really. Um, and what else did we have? Well, I set up another trap at my mum's garden, and it's highly exciting because we had. Well, we're wearing blue today yeah. because we had a very special blue visitor, and I'm just going to show it you. My overhead camera's not working, but I'm going to try and get him out. He's settled. So let's have a see if he will behave. Uh, if you can see. Gosh, he's enormous. He's absolutely enormous. This is a Clifton non -Bariel. I was so lucky to see him. So I'm sure John will know a lot about these, but um, apparently five years ago, they were thought to be extinct in this country. And I think they've sort of migrated, which is amazing. 
and um, they're sort of setting up colonies. But um, he's he's quite sleepy at the moment. But when I was getting him out, he he flashes his beautiful blue wings. So I will try to sort of nudge him a bit, and he might fly off. <laughs> We're indoors, so hopefully, and see if he'll show you his beautiful blue underwings. But uh, let's see if I can make him show. Did you get a flash then? Yeah, a little tiny one. There oh. we go. See the blue? Yeah. Oh, there we go. He's getting ready. He's vibrating a bit. I think he might fly. <laughs> so there we go. Super lucky. Um, and and so does your mum live just around the corner? Does she live in the she's just, area? Yeah, she's just a few streets away from me. So and we were just using a Robinson 20 uh what art knitting bulb and there was hardly anything else in the trap so I was expecting loads of large elements wings and cetaceous Hebrew characters like I had last weekend I had 45 LYUs and goodness knows how many cetaceous Hebrew characters but I think he'd frighten them all away because there was <laughs> there was literally you know maybe five or six other moths in there so um yeah so super lucky yeah <laughs> so those, those moths there's a question there saying what do they feed on Jackie I think it's aspen, but maybe I think the cat the caterpillars feed on aspen. Um, so yeah. And the the moths themselves are they the sort of moths that don't have mouthpieces? You know, they don't have mouths. They they're basically out flying to find a mate. Yeah, um, I think that's right. Well, I'm just looking. Do you know what? I don't know whether this one feeds. I don't know because I, I have. Maybe um, John. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it, it's it got does. a tongue. It's the sort of moth that actually comes more regularly to sugar. So oh, okay. Look out on your sugar patches. And actually, the underside is the best bit, I think. It's stunning. It? Yeah, it's drinking. Oh. Yeah. Black and white markings are amazing. Yeah. Have you found yeah. them, John, in your garden, did you say? I caught one once, yeah. 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 Yeah, they um, they feed on poplars as well, I think, because there's not that many aspens around, but there's lots of these moths now, so they can't just eat aspens. Right, okay. And they, um, yeah, they overwinter as an egg, so, uh, and then they feed up. They have a really amazing caterpillar, which looks like a bit of bark. Um, yeah. And then they uh, feed on poplars and over the summer, and then obviously emerge this time of year. So yeah. pretty impressive. They're one of our biggest moths, actually, really. Yeah. Um, yeah, they're pretty sizable things. Really I, I think there's been a handful of, there has been sightings in Gloucestershire. I don't know how many, but I, um, on my moth group that I'm a member right. of. It's yeah, it certainly been... seems to be spreading. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and is the spreading due to climate change? Oh, well, almost certainly, yeah. I mean, there's, they've suddenly, they used to be, they used to be quite rare. They used to live in like Kent, so they used to be in one wood or something, and then a few scattered spots. And then they used to occasionally turn up as migrants. Uh, but then in the last 10 years, they've suddenly turned up and then they're obviously breeding because that one's not flown far. It's oh, he's up. In condition. Well, it has now. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so they, uh, yeah they're, so they're obviously breeding here now and doing quite well. And they obviously do well in probably urban environments as much as anywhere else because um, anywhere where there's poplars and aspens for them to feed on, they'll, they're likely to colonise. Yeah, thank you, John. Yeah, that's that's so moths as indicators of the environment and the health of the environment and the way it's changing. Those are that that particular moth is a, a prime example, I think. Yeah. That's yeah. It. Great. <laughs> um, are you going to show us anything else, Jackie, or shall I go um, to Simon and come back? I guess. There? Uh, the only other thing that I've, we, we haven't finished opening up the uh, Skinner trap yet, but we've, I, the few things I've seen, I've got flounce rustics and rosy rustics, which are very beautiful too, uh, which are in here. I don't know if you can see that. That's a rosy rustic there. Yeah. Um, see the lights. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, and just uh, lots of large yellow end wings and cetaceous Hebrew characters, but I haven't counted up yet. So. Yeah. Great. <laughs> and, and you'll be. Re Recording them all, though Tim was encouraging us to. Yeah. Absolutely. Recording them and sending off the results to your local um, moth group for moth records. Yeah, I will. Yeah. <laughs> which is which is good. Thank you very much. If you find anything else, um, put it in the chat. There is one lady who's saying we gotta we gotta make sure we say the names of these moths nice and clearly so that 
um, she knows and hears and so on. So um, we can put some of the names in chat as we go if, if they're complicated ones. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, next then, shall we, is Simon, are you, are you there with your next lot of moths? Do you want yeah. to show yeah, us a few? Yeah, we can have a look at some of the other things. I haven't had uh, a delve into this side of the trap yet. Are we okay? Am I, mu are we, uh, am I yeah, muted? Yeah, no, you're all right. Yeah, you're there. There's a, a silver wire just warming up here. Oh, yeah. Flexing its wings, ready to fly. Uh, lots, lots. There we go. Off it. They are beautifully marked. Silver wire. Yeah. Just... Large yellow underwing, but let's see if we've got anything else in here. We've got there's an, another angle shades there. Oh, oh yeah, nice uh, always stone. lovely to see the brimstone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, oh, and what's this here? That's a big moth. Gosh, it's even bigger than the Clifton non Hey. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I think that might be a um, milk bottle plastic uh, version. <laughs> I think, yeah, but what, what would really you say that was? And it's going to fly off now to COP26. Oh, brilliant. We like that. Yeah, there's a um, garden carpet there. Nice. Yeah. On that one. Um, the 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 um, the COP26 moth was our prompt to um, tell everyone what we would what we wanted leaders to uh, to do or think about or say. You had a story. Yeah. I I did. I had a story. Yeah. So this is the, the, my story. I would want to tell them a story which I heard when I was in New Zealand with some Maori people, uh, and I was with a chap that was collecting cockles, and we went out with him on the foreshore, and he said our um, culture is that you pick the first cockle up and you put it behind you for the next generation, and I thought that was it stayed with me all that time. So my message would be that story that. Too often nowadays, it's all grab, 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 me, me, me. I blame it on Mrs. Thatcher, actually. <laughs> um, and let's have a little bit more of thinking about the next generation and, you know, and making sure that the resources on the planet for the next generation. So that would be my message. I don't know whether Biddy and Mike want to chip in whilst I flannel here in search of the <laughs> Clifton non -pareil. Nice. Snout. A little swat snout there with his snouty oh, yeah. Have has has um, Michael Biddy got a message? My 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 message was the same really. Was um, listen to the children. That's that's it really because we're, it's their future, and we're we're not we're not leaving them anything, are we? Poor things. Um, we'll be we'll be long gone, mm. and they'll be what we leave them. It makes me feel very sad. A, a lovely lovely. Message. So it doesn't look like we're going to have a Clifton non pare yet. Yet. It is absolutely oh, one. And an orange underwing off he goes. Oh, yeah. Another of the carpet moths, you know, again, really varied. So this one's got white markings on the edge there as well. Yeah. Probably we ought to move on because I dare yeah. say um, other people. Yeah, we've we've got um, Gemma from Plymouth Energy Community to talk to. I'm just going to see whether does does Mike have anything to say, message wise, or is he is he done enough hosting hosting it? I'll, I'll do whatever my wife tells me. <laughs> <laughs> we both know that's a lie. <laughs> but it is about the children, really, isn't it? As, as, as both Simon and, and Biddy said. Uh, I fear really we're not leaving the great inheritance and that makes me very sad. Yeah, so we're, we're all working together to do our individual bit, make our moth, 
join together might turn our whisper into a roar <laughs> a roar for change to yeah Hurrah, well, it's a great thanks, yeah thanks simon and biddy and mike for joining us uh, this morning and letting us look at your garden and um we might be back if you find another thing but we'll go on now to Gemma, who's patiently waiting who's who works for Plymouth Energy Community and has just actually come back from New Zealand. Um, so understands that whole story, Maori story, don't you, Gemma? Yeah, definitely. Um, and it's a bit about what I was going to talk about today. So, um, yeah, last week it was wonderful to come in and help make the, um, the sound vessels that will carry the voices the messages to the um to the delegates at cop and um most of my time is spent in front of a computer so it was really lovely to get out for the day and come and do something different um it's, there was also something in knowing the importance of the message that these sound vessels will carry um like I love the concept of like it's a collective visioning all of us sharing our stories and our wishes and you know everything we hope for I guess the new the more beautiful world our hearts know is possible and um yeah it was a really I wanted to be able to do it justice because I'm not an artist I've never done anything like um you know, moulding things with clay before, but there was something really special about like the connection of nature in all sorts of different ways in the way of just reconnecting with each other, being next to each other, being able to have conversations after so much isolation. And then also just literally getting your hands in the clay and the earth. It was it was really special. Um, so continuing the Aotearoa New Zealand theme the one that I made was it was a koru so um the koru it's just at the bottom there it's the lid to another bit that I made and in in Maori culture and Maori worldview the koru which kind of symbolizes the unfurling of the silver fern means new beginnings growth and is a representation of strength which is really what I want to to kind of give to to the delegates that are at COP and everyone that's part of it as well it's exhausting contributing so much to event an event that you know is so important um so yeah strength and new beginnings and my message for them would definitely leave your egos behind this is this is about the future of all beings and also raise the voices of the people that have had the least impact i mean the least the least contribution but are having the most impact on them already so that's my kind of message and thank you for such a beautiful experience of contributing to making the sound vessels it was really lovely and it was wonderful to see the kind of wide diversity of what everybody made and and contributed so yeah thank you i just hope it's strong enough to make the journey up there <laughs> doesn't kind of <laughs> i'm i'm sure um thank you Gemma. i'm sure the vessels the clay vessels that we've been making will be strong enough we shall pack them up and you know take them carefully uh, yeah <laughs> yes yeah so, thank you yeah thanks um Jenny, have you got any more to say about messages that we've been um, connecting? So I just wanted to, to share that screen again. Um, if I can, there we go. Um, oops, no, that's that. Okay. Um, so yeah, just to, to reiterate really what, um, what, what Gemma said, it was so such a wonderful experience to be in that space together and making and um, away from the screen for a few days. So we had the three days and we invited lots of people who've been involved in the project. Unfortunately, we couldn't invite everybody, but we had we had quite a, a, um, a range of, of people with different um, input into the project who came along who we just haven't really seen in person. We've seen them through this, this screen. Um, and and um, as Gemma was saying, being given the time and the clay 
and the freedom to play the the range of vessels that came out of it and um, the main con the consideration was that the speaker needed to fit inside and then there needed to be openings for the sound to get out and kind of thinking about the, the botanic gardens and the the various um challenges that those are going to throw at us in terms of of moisture levels and things like that um but it just i think uh kind of comparing again to the the messages that we're receiving the variety and that no message is right or wrong everybody has their their thing to say and it's all so relevant um so important and then that's what we are trying to do is to demonstrate that diversity of message that diversity of voices that there is no one solution um, but that if we all work together then all those little jigsaw pieces hopefully will fit together um, to, to be making a, a positive change for the future. So, um, yeah. Okay, thanks. Um, so now, uh, away, moving away from messages for a little while, we'll go back to our lovely moths who each and individually send their own message. Um, they're just living their lives as best as they can um, in nature. So I think we're moving on to Tim. Tim is in Herefordshire and are you there Tim? Oh you're muted at the moment. Muted yeah yeah yeah. Can you hear me now? Yes I can. Good stuff so I uh I thought I'd start off with I just had this canary shouldered thorn on my on my finger so oh. it's a good time to to see that one they're quite common at this time of year and they're absolutely beautiful they have this really bright zesty yellow body they're really furry and they have these lovely um, antennae as well. And, and, quite... and the antennae, Tim, is that that's um, a male? That's, that, that's right. Yes, yeah, a male. So it'll be picking up the pheromones of the, uh, the females. Um, so, yeah, there's quite a few in this trap this morning. I did have a little. Let's just. Um, I did have a bit of a, uh, a sort of. Oh, oh my goodness moment because I did find see a big moth on the um, wall um, and I thought it was a blue underwear but no chance of that but it, it kind of looks a lot smaller than that really um, I don't know if you can see that there oh, it is actually a red a red underwing um, they're, they're still pretty big yeah um, I mean, they're, they're the same sort of coloration as the uh, Clifton but they are just a little bit smaller and we've got this lovely red as it says red underwing and i don't know if we can make him him or her do it but hang on he's not playing ball Let's see it in my hand there um mm. i don't know if you can he was gonna well no, we, but we did see it we did see it yeah oh there we yeah. are lovely yeah it's just displaying nicely now that's really nice um weirdly enough they always seem to just um hang around on walls that's what they seem to like um obviously pretty pretty camouflaged for walls anyway but um that's what they don't tend to go into the trap and that's what some moths have different um strategies really but um i thought i'd just show you some of this what some of my favorite moths actually um in this time of year obviously all the leaves are turning and they have this uh, amazingly yellowy moths all the sallows and now this one's called a pink barred sallow uh, you can see it there mm. um absolutely lovely so they're they're very yellowy a lot of them do actually feed on willows and there's certainly a lot of them here um and this one i think they're gorgeous little things so that's a pink barred sallow in there that's pink just, barred pink, sallow pink barred sallow yeah really lovely moth um so I had a couple of those and i also had a couple of the what do you call this uh, the sallow moth there we go um it's a little bit Lander in terms of it's just it's plain more plain yellow um so that's very nice as well um, that, so that one's just called a sallow just called a sallow yeah and it does feed on sallows it feeds on willows um and there's certainly a lot of them here i did also get um uh, rosy rustics as well as uh common marble carpets um so look at this he's gonna flip them. He's, he's flown away he's flown. okay angle shades um and obviously, uh, I think Simon had one of these as well. Um, they look like again, they they're amazing camouflage in terms of they sort of they're crumpled up and they look like a an old leaf or something, I guess. Um, yeah, they're, they're one of my favourites. Yeah, when they when you get a really crisp one, it's just uh, you know it's lovely. It really are nice moths. Um, 
So let's see what else we've got in here. Um, I did get a rosy rustic as well, um, but he's looking, he's playing dead, I think. Oh dear. At least he's playing dead. I don't know if he is dead. Oh no, he's not. He's alive, but. Um, Where is he? Oh, wait. There we go. Oh yeah. He's the, he's in there somewhere. There we what go. was that? Oh, what what what's the function of the, of the of the bumps on the back? Is that just is that literally just camouflage or is again, there? I think it's cryptic camouflage. Yeah, I guess. Um, yeah, I don't I don't really know myself, but I think it's pretty uh, camouflage because you you imagine that um, you know branches and that sort of thing which they rest on yeah. they're not uniformly flat or anything, yeah. so they need to need to um, need to blend in really. That's what I reckon anyway. Oh, and I also got one of my favourite moths. And I know people like, um, you know, the hawk moths and that sort of thing. But I've got a frosted orange, which um, is a lovely thing. The, the camera doesn't really pick it out enough for you to see it probably. Mm. But if you have a look at a book, they're absolutely gorgeous little things. Um, just because I like the colour, really. They're, they're lovely, lovely little frosted orange. I'm quite pleased to get that one, really. Um, I yeah. haven't seen it in my garden. So. I haven't. I'm not sure that Watch Moths has had a frosted orange before. Oh, that's good. That's, so a, that's a new one. Where, where does where does that hang out as a larvae? Do you know? I, I don't know. Um, offhand. Maybe, I'll, maybe John I'll, does. I'll, I'll look it up unless he can beat me to it um, with his <laughs> with his mind. Uh, <laughs> frosted orange three seven six. There we are. Um, so various things: thistles, burdocks, foxglove. So he's, right. yeah bit of a catholic taste so that, that that'd be quite good for its uh, survival really um i had a lot of feathered gothics as well uh, let me just see if i can get a couple of those and a beaded chestnut um so you can see i've got a couple of, couple of those in there there's a feathered feathered gothic in there yeah. and then lovely another another lovely uh frosted orange on the back of there which i was oh yeah and you can there. see the colors more yeah they're really gorgeous little things um, You've got, have you got a yellow underwing as well poking out? Uh, um, I don't think there is. I think it's a square spot, I think. All oh, right. Yeah, yeah. Just There's saw his bead, head. Beaded chest. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I have got a couple of less yellow underwings. But I, for the last sort of a few weeks, I mean, I don't got many yet large yellow underwings, which is uh, surprising really because they're a very common thing. Um, so, yeah, there we go. I, I, I don't think I could show you anything else. Um, everything has flown away, so. No, uh, well, not... and um, in terms of your mum's space, do you put your moth trap there quite regularly, Tim? Um, no, it's, I say it's, it's not my my mum's property, and <laughs> they've no, just no. rented it. Um, however, it is a friend of mine's um, that yeah, they're, they're kind of friends of mine, and they um, they rent it out, and I have put it here before because it's such a lovely, lovely farm. They they farm it uh, sensitively. Um, it is a great place for moths, you know, there's not, there's barely any sort of pesticides or uh, fertiliser use, so it, it's really beneficial for wildlife, and um, that's what you've got to do really, is think, well, actually, my garden is just one tiny space, you've got to get out to other habitats where they've got different plants, really, and mm -hmm. always think about the plants with moths as, as well as other insects, you know, and being a botanist, primarily, I, it kind of helps you then think, oh, okay, they're likely to be here because that plant is here mm. um so it, it all it all ties together really yeah yeah okay well it's great that you've you've joined us for this one tim maybe you maybe you want to come again but um good luck with your hidden herefordshire project and the recording, thank you very much yeah recording project and i know they're probably similar ones around um as a lot of momentum at the moment encouraging people to record the stuff but thank yeah you. brilliant thank you thanks um now now we we're, we're moving on to claire at plymouth energy community and claire comes on most most months because we're we're obviously working together on this project and we're all getting pretty excited and um I don't want to use the word anxious, but um, we're all steaming ahead <laughs> for COP26 to get this final installation with the sound in the vessels, as well as the 20,000 moths um, at the botanics. And every month we get a bit closer, don't we, Claire? And every month, every month we've been 
sort of covering a, a different question that we know that the delegates at, at the COP meeting are going to um, discuss. And, and this one, this month's one, was, was about clean energy and how you persuade, how you persuade business and individuals to, to use more clean energy. That, that was the question they're going to ass, um, assess. But we're also going to discuss our collaboration generally, really, aren't we, Claire? Today. Yeah. We are, who, who was it, Naomi, who told us first about imaginal cells? Was it um, Rich? I think I think um, that was, was Simon um, Stennett. That, that was a friend of Chloe's, wasn't it, Chloe? Was it? It was. It was Simon Stennett. Who, was it um, Simon? Yeah. Okay, so ever ever since I've heard that term, Mark, I can't stop thinking about it, and I don't, <laughs> don't know what it is. And then I I think it's because it's um it's a really good representative of what the, this project and also the route that we've come so far in that um. It, it has been, in some ways, a really odd collection of people coming together. And I mean, Peck met um, you, Chloe and Naomi, was it 2018, 2017, 2018, something like that, wasn't it? It was 2018, yeah. Yeah, 2018. And at the time we were doing, um, Peck has a, a sort of a left field volunteer scheme in that we don't have traditional roles that we ask people to fulfill but what we do do is ask people to come along and learn about us and then we'll learn about them and see if there's a role that we can play together and in a way I haven't stopped thinking about that um that moth soup with its imaginal cells floating around and this whole project seems to have been a representation of that we've we've created this great big soup what well, started as quite a small soup um to to attract a wider audience and to to talk to people who were you know, in different fields to those that Peck had certainly been speaking to before. So we were familiar with technicians, of course, because we have solar arrays um, and also people who are very vulnerable, living in very vulnerable circumstances in Plymouth, because those are the people that we, we work to help when we try and alleviate fuel poverty or at least come together to do to get them in better circumstances. But it did widen and more and more people came in. So we had, um, you know, a, a master glazier came in. Jenny, it's where we met you, isn't it? I mean, we, we, had, we hadn't met you before. Um, and then all sorts of organisations across the city started joining in and showing interest. And then we've come to watch moths. And I, 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 I don't know a botanist. I've never met a botanist before, Tim. Hello. <laughs> uh, and, and all sorts of uh, different people with different skills. And that imagine yourself thing sticks in my head because these are all essential parts of a pattern that needs to be formed to make a better energy system. So that's my reflection this week. So if, if I don't think you can persuade people to want to be um, a, a certain way, to fit in a certain box. I think it has to make sense to the people that you're talking to. And that's all about having conversations rather than presenting something that you need to become because that then feels like you're you're not quite right yet. And I think if it's shown us one thing, it's that um, the moth to a flame, the whole moth to a flame thing is helping us do that. It's brought so many people. We've had, I was talking this morning, where's the, where's the furthest contribution we've had? And it's Australia. So we've had Australia, we've had Turkey, we've had America, haven't we? 20 schools within the Plymouth area, and I'm sure many, many more schools nationally are taking part. Um, what, what else have we had? We've, we've got uh, funding from all sorts of uh, a wide variety of areas. So housing association, sovereign, pitched into a crowd funder that we never thought we'd be able to do or manage or, or succeed in that we did. And uh, I, suppose, I suppose that's it. Gemma talked about new beginnings, growth and strength. And I reckon that's exactly what, what Moths to a Flame has helped us do. And also, Jenny, I don't know if you noticed, but you're a complete poet at the end of that section. And you said, at the time, the clay the freedom to play. <laughs> I'm going to change that. I'm going to nab it. I'm going to say Moss to a Flame as the time, the way and the freedom to play. And that's how we'll get there. And that's uh, that's it. We'll, we'll stick that message to COP26. Yeah. Fantastic. Thanks, Claire. <laughs> and uh, I'm, I'm moving on from you far less poetically. There was going to be a, a, another one of our UK tour people now from Glasgow but she's going to come along next month so I shall just mention a little bit of how we're uh, making friends in Glasgow and what we're encouraging to happen in in general terms so so as you all know 
this exhibition, this installation, Monster of Flame, is fluttering its way up to Glasgow in the botanics, in the botanical gardens, and uh, will be installed there. It'll take us about five days to install it, and it will then be up for two weeks, from the 1st to the 12th of November, in the, in the glass houses. I don't know whether anybody watching has is going and if you are going you can tell us on chat because we we will very soon be inviting people to come and see the installation those people that are attending cop as well as others that um are in glasgow as it were so so that's that's the first thing but we've got probably three or four other um, sets of partners who are working with us. Um, one of them is in a place called the Bowling Green and the, in Pollock Shields. And the artists there are working with local schools around there doing um, moths to a flame and night creaturey type of um, activities. And they're going to have a big community party in October just before the uh, COP26. So they're coming next month to tell us a bit more about that. And then there's the Children's Wood, which is a, a playground that has been left, a football ground really, that's just been left and has become a woodland. So over 20 years, various birch trees and others have colonized it. And it's uh, one big, wild playground in the middle of a whole load of um, blocks of flats and and there's some areas to grow so so they've had a a big event and actually uh concentrated on insects moths to a flame was part of that and apparently they filled a tree with these plastic moths that similar to the one that simon found in his trap maybe it flew down i don't know but that that's uh, another partner. And then near there, there's this puppet center. And the puppets, um, it's, a bit, it's, a, it's a bit of an odd one, but Chloe, Chloe used to be a puppeteer long, long, long while ago. Anyway, we have this contact and they have decided to be our Glasgow address for last minute moths. And also we can use that space to sew together our last strings we can use it as a making space they're just a little way from the botanic gardens so you know all the time you you um find new partners and new and people that you can work with to help support your project and like claire was talking about this moth soup that happens with individuals within that sort of registering each other and working out how to work better together it's sort of what's going on up in Glasgow. Um, and I think there's there's also Glasgow community energy as well. So there's an artist there called Ellie, Ellie Harrison, and she has uh, her own project of, um, of some signs that are about the climate, climate future, which have been traveling around the UK and they're all gonna merge in Glasgow for COP26. But she, she manages the Glasgow Community Energy. So we're, we've been working with them and we'll hope to um, do some promotion and um, share the energy themes with them and with PEC across, across Glasgow during COP. There's tons of schools as well being involved. So that's the sort of start of what's going on in Glasgow leading up um, over the next month and and then in October you'll hear more and then we'll be there so it's not long right that's me covering that bit I think finally we are going to go over and see John Walters and the little film that you took at a at a site a week or two ago John yes and yeah see what moths have been found and then oh, yeah. oh, any yeah. other mothy stories and i might oh. give, i might we're a little bit ahead of ourselves today but that's no bad thing but 
um, I might give the other moths a chance if any other moths have been found just just before we leave. But let's let's see what you've you found. Okay, yeah. I'll uh, I'll talk over it as it comes up. Right. So this is just up up on the edge of the moor, up near Shipley Bridge. I was uh, working up there, and I asked if I could set the moth trap up. So I set it up. Uh, it was just under two weeks ago now, it's nice and mild, but a good selection of autumn moths. You see, I put out all my sheets and bits of old projector um, screens, which are good for reflecting the light out. And uh, there's a, one of the egg boxes, then you see uh, lots of moth brimstones and some centre bars, sallows, you see in there, lots of large yellow underwings. This is a straw dot moth, um, that's just a dusky thorn moth. Now, this moth is one that's actually. Um, slightly threatened because it feeds on ash so you know a lot of the ash trees are dying off these are the eggs it has strange rectangular shaped eggs which are laid on the ash buds during the uh, uh, during this time of year then the caterpillars feed on the ash leaves in next year um, lots of black arches moths there which are nice to see usually you catch the males but there was a, a female there on the right the males have these big frilly antennae used to detect a pheromone scent produced by the female. And their caterpillars feed on oak. They're quite distinctive little caterpillars if you ever find one of those. Yeah, Being on the edge of the moor, I've caught quite a few antler moths. These are often quite common on the moorland, but I don't tend to see them in other places. Um, the autumnal rustic, a good uh, seasonal moth to catch. And as well as those, there's the frosted orange, which we saw earlier. Always a stunning moth to see this time of year. Uh, the centibard sallow moth. And the uh, group of sallows which you know, mimic uh, autumn leaves. Uh, the beautiful peach blossom, it's one of my favourite moths, it's a stunning little moth. And very camouflaged here, this is a knot grass moth, it was sat on the wall by the track on a bit of granite. But you often see the caterpillars this time of year and they're really quite bright and distinctive and it's sort of caterpillar you come across this time of year. Um, Agpie moth, it's quite a late one but there's been quite a few late moths this year. The magpie moth is interesting because the actual caterpillar is, has the same sort of coloration as the moth and the pupa is a wasp mimic as well mm. so a very uh, stunning thing this is the dunbar moth there was one of those in the trap and the caterpillar of this one doesn't really eat leaves that much of it, uh, it it can find other caterpillars it just eats those instead because it uh, saves the bother of eating all those leaves really why not just eat this eat some other caterpillars and finally, in the bottom of the trap, there were some uh, sexton beetles. And uh, if you want to have a look at a picture of these, these beetles um, will bury dead animals. And there's a link to a YouTube uh, video. If you look on my YouTube videos, you'll find uh, a link to the sexton beetles burying a shrew. And there's a little time lapse of that. So they'll, they'll pair, they will pair up and then bury the shrew and lay their eggs on it. And they're amazing, those sexton beetles, because they'll also, um, evolutionary speaking, they're probably the earliest married couple because they, um, you know, millions of years ago, this evolved. But they actually they pair up and then they the pair bury that shrew or any other bits of dead animal, and then they they look they let the female lays the eggs and then the pair look after the young and the the young larvae are actually make a little noise and they're fed by the like a bird would feed its young. So they, yeah. the adults will feed those those larvae, which is very unusual in insects. So uh, uh, fascinating things. And if you look online, you'll find some videos of these uh, these little larvae being fed by the the adult beetles. What was the name of the beetle again? They're what? sexton beetles. Sexton beetles. Yeah, they feed on dead animals. You'll find if you run a moth trap, particularly this time of year, they seem to turn up. You'll find these orange and black, or sometimes they're all black beetles. If you take a whiff of them, they, you can, they smell it, they spend all their lives in dead bodies, so they absolutely stink. So you might well just get a hint that they're in the trap from the smell of them. Um, but if you let them go, they'll fly off at night and find some other dead corpse to, uh, to rummage around in and, and breed in. Oh. They're part of the and process, you know. Yeah, I, and, and I, earlier on, you me, you mentioned a moth that actually didn't eat leaves, ate other caterpillars. And yeah, I, yeah, I the Dunbar moth. The Dunbar moth. Yeah, it will eat leaves, but, you know, it can't be bothered, really. It's, if it can find another caterpillar, why bother eating all the leaves? Cut out the middleman and just uh, eat a caterpillar. Yeah, and, and all the proteins all just go straight yeah, in there. Yeah, as it's obviously, you know, these things evolve, you know, predators evolve in 
in uh, in all these systems in all groups of animals and there are um, well that's one in Britain which is known to be predatory and there is a pug moth I think it's in Hawaii um, that eats what is it, eats other insects so it's it, it's a predatory larva I mean that's all it does you know it eats other other insects. Mm. Well, it's it's amazing to learn about that whole whole spectrum of behaviours. Like, like Claire was mentioning earlier, there's, you know, a human spectrum of behaviours too. And, yeah. and uh, yeah, we all sort of fit together like a jigsaw <laughs> um, to create our ecosystems that we live in. Yeah. So well, Insects, obviously, they've been around so long, so many millions of years that they've, have, they've diversified in anything. That they can possibly have thought of they have by now in you know, evolutionary so, so they, they, live pretty, they live pretty well everywhere and, and will feed on pretty well anything that's available really yeah so we need to need to do more learning from insects and how they've evolved oh well, certainly i mean you know they are part with along with plants they're the basis of all your life you know microorganisms plants and in, insect and plant interactions are, are, the basis of all all ecosystems really mm. have you have you read that book what was it called in is it called chloe entanglement i'm halfway through it entangled at life with the fun life. Life. yeah i mean that it just shows isn't it how all these <laughs> all these yeah you know, the fun significance of uh, fungi creatures all together but it's quite mind-blowing isn't it how they're all interconnected and, and mm -hmm. work together and it is the basis you know that's the basis of all life us big animals like us just sit on the top of of all that stuff which is happening and um, mm -hmm. even down to you know, the real things that control the world of tiny microorganisms aren't they the viruses as we well know and and bacteria and that, all those tiny things which you never even see and don't really think about until they they affect us but they are they are what makes the world live yeah yeah and and maybe on that thought the thought of the small and the invisible and mm -hmm. how the impact they they have on our moths as well as humans perhaps we'll leave it there and just double check that there's no other mothy stories to come from our mothers any more? Any more for any more? No, no, we've, well, we've done really well today. We've, we've seen a wonderful array of autumnal moths. And there was one image in John's film that looked like a scattering of autumn leaves. It was beautiful. And um, we've had that exciting Clifton non parade big thing that Jackie found, which, um, so much I've never seen one live so for me so so much bigger and more exciting than I thought and an indicator of warming climates and a reminder that although it's beautiful we need to do do more individually about that and um I think I'll just talk a little bit next next month so next month it would be lovely to see you all we are um we we're inviting devon wildlife trust to be with us next month and we'll be visiting one of their nature reserves called meath it's in sort of mid north devon and they're doing some work there to become net zero um we'll set a moth trap up there and we'll also be looking a bit more at at their work generally across the county of Devon to um, for climate change and find out a bit more about what they're doing on all their reserves. So, so they're coming to join us and they'll be helping to promote Watch Moths as well um, to a, an even wider audience. So we're hopeful for that. And it, that will be our last Watch Moths before COP26 before going up to Glasgow and in Glasgow itself we'll be doing a lot of live um, short live broadcasts so that you can see the installation so you can get involved from afar in what activity is going on down in the centre of the city and um, I think Jenny I think we've come 
to the end of the show what do you think yeah I think it was fantastic um as Chloe said in the chat there were quite a few firsts in there for, for all sorts yeah. of different things happening um really exciting and yeah. wonderful to spend the morning with you guys um I'm going to do what I always do at the end and just share the Moths to Flame website again so Moths to Flame art um if you are feeling creative and you would like to make some milk bottle moths we would absolutely love to receive those we've got quite a few already but we definitely would like some more um we're asking people to send them in by the 9th of october um to that plymouth address which is all the way down the bottom somewhere here um if for some reason um, you're not able to do the 9th of october please do just drop us an email um we do have as naomi said a uh, um a postal address up in glasgow though we would really like to have the the moths prepared ready to hang in the botanic gardens um, when we get up there so um in the meantime you can also do please encourage friends neighbors colleagues to record their message of hope um all sorts of other things we've got the shop here in terms of supporting the project so um we do have some funding but it, you know everything helps to be able to get us all the way up to glasgow um it's quite a long way to get up there um and otherwise keep an eye on the news as to what's happening um things happening in Oxfordshire as we know and um, events we've got all sorts popping up on here to the point where the pictures have begun to disappear because there's so many different things in the calendar um, so yeah it's exciting times um, look forward to seeing you at the next Watch Moths which is let's skim through to October 15th 16th of October there we go 15th 16th yeah. in the calendar here so you, you're able to book your tickets now um please do pop in and, and say hello um and otherwise and just to drop us an email if you have any questions or ideas or suggestions love to hear them and if i don't know whether tim there's one last question here but i, I think maybe tim's popped out now but there's um he was there's a chap there wondering what book tim was using as a reference i i think it was the the one with photographs in Chloe. What was the name of that one? Oh, the one that you use. Oh, oh. right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah anyway. Got a book there. This one. Yes. Chris. Yes. Yeah, so Chris Manley, British Moths. I think yeah. that's one, and that is one that a lot of people use. Um, it's, it's got micro moths in as well, and it's a photograph. Yeah yeah so i'll just put this in the chat um, and thank everybody for coming along um and see you in october thank you okay thanks Bye. John. Cheers. thanks john thanks, thanks. Bye -bye.